So this video is actually quite basic video, but I know there are some people out there that have actually asked this question for me. So I just thought I would actually put this into a video and this is actually about uh, variable shutter. And that comes down to, you know, just really dialing in your shutter speed. And this can be a really good feature for a lot of people who actually film screens, who film uh, particular lights that don't necessarily match the same frequency or even just mobile phones. Now, when it comes to Australia, we are in PAL region and a lot of the smartphones now are sort of have like a 60 hertz refresh rate which essentially is kind of uh, a little bit off when it comes to the sync of your shutter speed and the refresh rate of the actual screen so what you will actually find if you try and film a phone you're going to get a whole bunch of lines going down the phone and this could be very similar when it comes to different lights because the lights frequencies the power could be at 50 hertz or 60 hertz and if you are in slow motion and you're trying to dial in the correct shutter speed you may find that those lights will actually flicker and that's not a good thing. And I've seen a lot of people on YouTube, uh, especially when it comes to Australia, are getting these sort of flickering lights because they're actually using NTSC in a power region or vice versa, they're using PAL in an NTSC version. And essentially the differences between PAL and NTSC is the type of frequencies that our electrical uh, components have. Now the location of this may vary depending on which Sony model you have or which other camera brand model you have. Now in the Sony camera, you go down to the briefcase, you go to the area slash date, and you will see NTSC and PAL selector. So you change between NTSC or PAL really easily. Now we'll take about five seconds just to quickly reboot depending on which camera you have it could take longer or quicker. Now on this particular camera NTSC will give me 24, 30, 60 and 120 frames per second whereas PAL will give me 25, 50 and 100 frames per second. Now the dimness of the light source may actually affect the way that the shutter is actually working with the frequency of let's say this mobile phone right here. You, if I do turn it up, you probably can't see the flickering as bad, but if I do dial down the intensity of the actual light, you can actually see the flickering really, really bad. And some people have actually commented that if they shoot in 25 frames per second, they actually just dial it down to 1 40th of a second and that kind of gets rid of it. But Unfortunately, if you do go in nice and close, you can see that there still is flickering there. So this is where that variable shutter will actually help in these particular situations. And this could vary uh, when it comes to different frame rates and different shutter speeds, just trying to dial it in to that decimal point. Now this may actually apply to some other camera manufacturers as well, but Sony calls it variable shutter and especially when it comes to their newer Sony cameras, this is what is included in these cameras and most of the older cameras don't actually have this feature. Now all you need to do is go into your settings and into the camera icon, then go down to number five, which essentially is shutter slash silent. Then all you need to do is go over to the anti flicker set and then put it into variable shutter mode. Now, if you click variable shutter on and go back to your main screen, this will allow you to go into, let's say 50.1, 50.2, 50.3, so on and so forth. This will actually give you that decimal point where you can dial in your shutter speed uh, to the best, I suppose, frequency for the particular item that you're filming. And this will actually change obviously if you are doing um let's say you know 50 frames per second or 100 frames per second you're trying to dial it in the best you can for that particular uh, device that you're trying to film if you're getting flickering lights this is what you should potentially be doing now i know there are some fixes in post when it comes to flickering lights but you generally want to try and get this done in camera as best as possible because I've seen uh, some weddings and stuff, you know, have different sort of lights that they bring in. And, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of flickering lights in a wedding scene. You don't want that. You definitely don't want to give it to the client. And in the background, there's just weird flickering lights or lines going down your image because of that frame rate isn't syncing with the frequency. So this is definitely the fix you want to do in camera as best as possible first. And then if you don't get it perfect, then potentially get it done in post. 
Now this is me filming my truck here and I'm trying to find the best shutter speed when it comes to 120 frames per second and just really dialing it in with that variable shutter. Now on this small three inch screen, it is very difficult to tell the difference. And what I do suggest is try and find that shutter speed and you know, obviously jot it down, take it into post-production and quickly just have a look at it on a larger screen and see if you actually have dialed it in correctly or have a larger monitor to be able to tell the difference because I couldn't actually get the best shutter speed. I will have to go back and forward and then when I know I'm going to be filming that exact car, this is where I can actually dial in that exact shutter speed. Now look, will most clients actually notice the flickering? Probably not, but there are some filmmakers out there that definitely will notice it, but there are also some clients that will actually notice this, especially if you are filming you know, high-end car commercials, if you're filming uh, weddings, and there are some of those clients that will actually notice this. This is the kind of information that you need to know and know how to fix it uh, right there and then. But like I said, there is that last case scenario where there's some software that can remove the flickering. Sometimes it's not perfect. There are some post-production fixes where you can try and uh, uh, duplicate the layer and uh, blend the layers in and do it that way. This is what you just need to try and do in camera as best as possible uh, to get the best results. But uh, yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. If it is, obviously, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching. And like I said, if you have a different camera manufacturer, hopefully you have a very similar option as well. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.